I'm uh, Tom Cheesman. I'm uh, a reader in German, so I'm working in the um, Department of Languages, Communication and Media. Um, as a specialist in German, I'm associated with the Centre for Contemporary German Culture. Um, and I'm also the leader of a research team, a cross-disciplinary research team, which consists of, uh, of me and a colleague in computer sciences, um, Rob Laramie, um, and two research assistants, one based over there in computer science, who's a specialist in data visualization, and a research assistant who's based in uh, my department, who's a specialist in machine translation and is a software architect. Um, and we're also working uh, on this project on digitalization of, of Shakespeare translations. We're also working with a uh, design studio in, um, in Berlin, specializing in interactive visual online design, and with a very large software company called Abbey, who specialize in uh, digitization of texts. And um, that's a key part of the work that we do, is taking texts and uh, uh, taking printed texts and turning them into machine readable digital texts so that we can put them into an online database and play around with them, do fun things with them. One writer in particular who I've studied a lot, very controversial, um, very high profile, very interesting German novelist and playwright who's of a Turkish background. And he produced a, uh, he wrote a translation, an adaptation translation of Othello, which uh, was absolutely fascinating and very successful and very controversial. And studying that, I came to realize that one of the ways that it's distinctive and interesting is through the way that it differs from the other translations of Othello that are already out there, that already exist. And so that set me thinking, how, could we, how can people actually uh, compare and contrast? Because it turns out there's not just a few, there are dozens and dozens of diff different translations. And how can one study them? How can one understand how they relate to one another? What makes one distinctive in relation to others? That set me thinking that the way to do it was to develop digital tools to do this, and there were no such digital tools. So I put together a research team, and uh, with this problem of understanding what we call version variation visualization. The visualization bit is, refers to the way that you can use tools on a screen to analyze differences between translations uh, beyond just reading them. You can extract data, you can extract information from the texts digitally and display them using various kind of graphic methods. And uh, so that's what we've, we've done. That's the uh, research that we're um, involved with at the moment. The, the great thing about the potential of digital technologies is it opens up multiple translations as a, as a potential field of study, which at the moment doesn't really exist as a field of study because once you've digitalized lots of translations you can do lots of exciting things with them and uh, things that, that, that people can understand some of the differences between translations without necessarily being able to understand the language itself. Um, so for one thing you can use data visualizations to examine the patterns in translations, uh, the patterns of difference without necessarily understanding individual pieces of text, being able to read them. You can see how they differ, how patterns of difference have changed through the centuries, how they differ between translations for the theater versus translations for readers, and so on, that kind of thing. So we can use visualizations to explore the differing patterns of translations, the, the differing structures, the different internal relations, the different word choices that they make. Um, from which we can get all sorts of un new understandings of translations without necessarily understanding uh, the languages um, individually. We can use machine translation. So one of the interfaces that we've built displays 
uh, multiple different translations of any speech that you choose from the play. It displays all the different translations and it also displays a Google Translate uh, back translation into English. So um, it may not be a very good translation, but it's good enough for you to be able to understand what the translators have done compared with other translators. Um, and finally, the interactive possibilities of, of, of uh, web-based resources means that um, in the future, in the next phase of the work, we hope to be able to um, have networks of, of users online um, uh, looking at the translations and um, providing their own, correcting Google Translate, giving better translations, interpreting the text um, themselves in new ways. So all these exciting possibilities. What I'm most excited about is the potential for developing this project into, into something actually really quite huge. There are vast numbers of texts of world culture, world heritage, which have been translated over and over again and into all the world's languages, effectively. And the potential for creating a digital site where people can share their understandings of those texts um, through uh, looking at the multiplicity of different translations is absolutely enormous. And it's very important to me as a modern linguist, um, the potential here to enable people to overcome language barriers on the one hand, um, but on the other hand to sensitise people to the differing potentials of different languages to express ideas and to make people interested and fascinated by language, um, which, is, which is all we need really as a starting point. This country does have a problem with uh, language learning uh, on the decline and this is one resource that could, I think, help to uh, uh, encourage people, enthuse people about language learning.